Welcome back to the GSL Up and Down matches. It's time for another Terran versus Terran. It's Maru versus Keen. Before we get into that, we'll take a look at the current group standings. No, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're it's right, too though. early to look at the group standings because they don't mean anything uh, yet, ultimately. Yeah, I can give you a, a quick overview if you want to, though. Yes, We actually, have Fantasy do. with a 2-0 in the group, Mauro with a 1-0, and then uh, on uh, third place, Tide, Akeen, Hero, and his T, all of them losing uh, their first game. So, for Keen, this is the question if he can tie things up with Mauro. If he wins here, then Mauro would be on 1-1 and Keen would be on the same score. It's going to be an interesting game. Keen already lost his first TVT against Fantasy, who started with a very aggressive double barracks opening on Whirlwind. Mara is a strong player in the mirror match, and now they're going to clash on Icarus. So that's going to be a quite the intense battle between the two Terran players here. Let's see what happens. Can Mara go for the 2-0, or will Keen equalize the score between the two of them? Here, the GSL up and downs with Colin Wolf. Marine Prince starts at the bottom right of the map. In red, we have the Terran player for the Prime team. It is. Maru Pra. Don't mess with him. He is such a strong player. Yep. Very strong opponent. Also to the top left. Couldn't show us his skills in the game against Fantasy because he lost in an under five minute game. This is for Team MVP, of course. The Commander. MVP King. Like many uh, young pro gamers in Korea, Maru has actually quit school to pursue being a pro gamer, and this is something that you know his family may or may not accept. Most likely, they've accepted it since he's continuing to do so. Um, but you know, for him, in the long term, his career is really important because he is sacrificing quite a bit to do this. Yeah. And whereas we have Maru going into gas, we have the Commander so far without... Yeah, Commander Keen without a refinery. He doesn't have one just yet, he's going into a barracks and will then most likely start with the command center. Maru is being the aggressor in this yep. game. And Keen starts a delayed gas. It's going to be a slightly later gas. Normally you see gas on 13, but he's going for 15. Maru's gas was a gas first, so even so, Maru is the faster yeah. gasser. Yeah, you're actually right. Keen is not going into the command center. He starts to gas a little bit later. So this will give him a few more minerals in the early game, but now he can go into his own tech regardless. And depending on what exactly he scouts, he can go, for example, for a Viking if he suspects there is going to be either the Medivac pressure or a Banshee play. Yeah, this is an extremely flexible build by Keen. We could even see him go into that reactor expand with the command center at the back with the extra minerals he got, and then have the reactor marine production out. That's something that we've seen with this gas timing quite a bit in the past. Oh, he's in here and he hides behind the Lion Sight Walker. Now he's going to be able to see the gas first in detail and yeah. also see the factory. Well done. He sees exactly what's happening here, knows about the timings, and he's also able to repel Maru's scout. Yeah, and he is going for that reactor expand build that I was talking about. He's On this map, I really like this because it's a long map and it's really hard for your opponent if he goes for an aggressive gas build to deny your scout because it's also a wide ramp. Oh wow, the SCV gets in and sees the tech clap. The Marine was so close to finishing it off, but a little bit too late. So now he knows it's going to be the fastest possible Banshee being made on the tech lab because he saw the tech lab going down too. And this build that Keen has chosen is just... I love it so much because on this map you're always going to see what your opponent is doing no matter what because it's a wide ramp. What is he going to do? Make three depot wall and then try to get your SCV out? It's just not going to happen. Yeah. So Keen plays this very, very well. Mauro already has a double gas. He wants to go into the Banshee again here, but at this point, it looks like Keen is going to be ready. Keen will be able to get into his own stop or play and then just get one of the Vikings out. Yeah. And he already has his command center on the way, so in terms of economy, the MVP player should be way ahead of his opponent. And if Mauro commits to Cloak very heavily, which he is right now, then that's going to mean that Keen will have a better tech. Keen will probably be the one to have Siege tanks out first, for example. What Mauro really has to do with this is he has to at least force a lot of scans to uh, make this work. He needs to make sure that this investment into the tech is not in vain. Yeah. With the switch here, Keen is going to start Hellion production. And since he's cut Marines out of this altogether, it looks like he wants to go into Mech. 
with mech play, he is going to want to have turrets. You know, you use scans, like you said, he wants to force scans. Keen is going to need that eBay, regardless of the fact that he wants to skip the upgrades. Yeah, so far he doesn't have an eBay. He could, of course, also just go into a Raven. This is one of the op options that he has when he identifies, well, my opponent is going into Cloak, so I better just get a Raven there and yeah. use that to get the detection. But first of all, what you need is the Viking. And when he gets the Viking first, he's got the Tech Lab ready, and I think you're right, actually. I think we will see a Raven. He's going to make one more Marine, and as soon as the Viking is done, he'll switch and make the Raven, and he's going to try to use scans until that time. He knows without a doubt that his opponent is going for Cloak Banshees. He's seen everything. And we also have now the Engineering Bay built for him, so he leaves all the options open to him. The Banshee already on the way, and you always want to do at least a little bit of damage. But here we go, here comes the scan. Is he able to get out of the range? And he actually is, so, so far everything going well for Maru. Yeah. Forcing... He yeah, he, I mean, he's, he forced the scan exactly. That's what he wants as best as he can. He gets several more Marines here, too. Yeah, doing this really well. There is enough energy now for another scan. But first of all, we, Keen wants to get into a position where he can actually win against the Banshee. And he's just not there yet. He's trying to fly with the Banshee that he can pull this off. Here's the missile turret, though, that he didn't see yet. He's trying to fly outside of the range. Is Keen going to sacrifice the energy for a scan? No, he's not. Just three seconds left. And he may scan this one. Nope. And the thing is, he's actually not going into mech, as I expected. The tech lab was not for the Raven either. He's going to start stim. The thing is, he's lost so many Marines already that this is not a comfortable situation. With a double Viking now, here comes the scan, and this time the Banshee is, of course, not able to escape. Now, the Banshee does go down, and there's one more Banshee coming up from Morrow. In fact, he has another one rally. At this point, I think it's, it's a bit futile, you know, uh, to send those across there. I think as long as there is not enough detection, he can do a lot, but there are more and more missile turrets now in the main base of Keen, so that should help him quite a lot. If Keen doesn't have to dedicate energy to scans, then it's a sure win for the MVP Terran player. But so far, Maru is somehow still making this work. Yeah, he really is. He's finding all the weak points. This is really impressive. There's a scan, but he's going to get a few more SCVs on his way out. Exactly. He doesn't even try to escape. He knows fully well that at this point it's already too late to get away with the Banshee. So he's just sticking around and trying to take down more SCVs, and he's doing a good job at that. Yeah. Cloak on the way now for Keen. Counter Cloak. And he's Keen is actually the one who's, yeah, who's not only going for the cloak, of course, but also in addition, the makes Banshee. sense, the Banshee. It'd be funny if he uh, did not get the Banshee. Yeah, getting for cloak and not building a Banshee would definitely surprise your opponent a little bit. Yeah. But probably not help you too much. Exactly. Um, you know, the thing is, your opponent's looking for the Banshee and can't find it, but it's not because it's invisible, because it has cloak, but it's <laughs> because it's not there. Um, Wouldn't that be a trick? That would be a tricky. Mind games. Yeah. It's like, well, if you have Cloak but no Banshees, you save money on the Banshees. It's the same cost of two Banshees, but your opponent's always guessing. <laughs> yeah. Did he see? That's the question now. Is the Banshee coming out for Keen? Because if he did, then he knows he's facing this. But Mario is doing more and more damage here. How At the 10.30 minute mark. Yeah. How is he able to pull this off? There he is once again. And he's taking down another SCV. He killed 12 in total. The worker count at this point is currently looking... Pretty equal, 40 to 41, but keep in mind that Keen is the one who started his own expansion so much faster. He should actually by all means be ahead in Harvesters, if not for this massive amount of damage to his economy. Yeah. The tech here for these two players is similar, but I'll talk about why it's different. Maru has double upgrades coming out once, so he's going to have the better upgrades for his Marines. He also has the better Marine count right now, it's 16 to 9. Um, but he has no combat shields for his Marines, he has stem. So that's how things differ here, and it does take out the Banshee. Yeah, second scan comes in and Keen loses his own Banshee. They're just dancing around each other, trying to deal a few blows and do a bit of damage here. Maru is the first one to go into a Raven, but he has to be careful because at this point, the amount of Vikings in the air for his opponent is just a little bit better than his own. Yeah, that Banshee is going to do some damage. It turns out that every damage that Mar makes is just going to do damage no matter what. It's not only about the damage itself, it's also just you keep your opponent on his toes. He always has to react on what you're doing and this might result in him slipping with his macro. Yeah, just making some mistakes in general. It also keeps him off his back and Maru has armory going up. He's going to get ahead in upgrades right now. Yeah, at least he should. Keen is also getting his own uh, um, armory, but a little bit later than Maru. Yeah, and he only has one eBay. Besides that, he's just now starting his plus one armor, which is something that Maru already has. 
and he forces a stim with that Banshee. These Banshees are just, they're the late game, I mean not late game, but I guess mid game Banshees, you just don't see these like this, this is kind of weird. Keen is now in a position where he's like, okay, well it's actually time for me to move out, I'm not going to play your games anymore. I'm going to pressure you and you have to deal with it. Let's see how you can actually react to what I'm pulling off here. He's moving out with Marines with a little bit of tank support and also his Air Force that he has. Let's see if he can actually pull through here. Uh, Still behind an upgrade. That he is. And Maru's upgrades are just getting insanely ahead. He's going to have combat shields now with his Marines and he's going to have the Siege Tech upgrade. Keen is not going to do any damage here. This will not work. Both players scanning a little bit here, trying to figure out where the best angle of attack is. And then the answer to that for Keen is now the backdoor expansion because he sees the armies in the main. Terran versus Terran, at some point in the game, just comes to a battle of position. It's all about position, position, and position. And this is exactly what Keen tries to make work in his favor here. He's sieging up at the rocks, taking them down, and he doesn't really allow Maru to get close. Even the Banshee is now getting useful by trying to take out those siege tanks on the high ground. Yeah, this is actually the best trade Keen could have hoped for, and he didn't have to force anything. Oh wow, the drop in the main base, that could do so much. He's got Maru a siege tank. is not ready. Siege tank in the line of sight blocker is going to be a big problem. Sieges it up, goes for the turret first. Well, no, runs by it even, and goes for the SCVs. And he takes out a fair amount of them, but Maru is already there. Already trying to defend, and he's running in at the back door, trying to take down this force. There are so many siege tanks. They don't target the tanks of Keen though, finally they're being taken out and Keen dropping in supply rapidly and Mauro even able to just now shut those, yeah, not even take those medivacs down but at least he's able to just send them away. Yeah, he pushes them out and this is a situation now that we're in that Keen has a third base landed, but Maru can soon if he wants to. I just want to talk about army supplies a little bit here. Maru now is significantly ahead. He defended that, pushed it back and traded well. He has the better upgrades coming out here. The next attack they have against each other in the middle of the map, since the Marine counts are so similar, is going to go into Maru's favor almost certainly if he can fight on even ground because he just has 2-2 two -two finishing up here. And the problem is though for, Ki for Maru that Keen already has a third base and if Keen is somehow able to hold on to that with the increased harvest account too, it's going to be difficult for Maru to just win in the late game. But there's just so much aggression coming out of Maru now. He's already trying to take down this base and he knows about it. He knows exactly what's going on here. Yeah. He picks off the tank with his Banshee, forces a scan of Keen, and still gets away. And this base is not going to be able to mine very well, even though it is mining right now. He pulls the SCVs away. Worker supply is heavily in favor of Keen, which also means that Maru just has the better army supply. And this is what forces the command center off now. Has to fly away. The siege tanks are just in way too much of a good position. Yeah, and Maru continues the attack. He is not going to let up. He has to make sure that he can make something with this force. Oh, the Banshee! That was close. If he had not killed it, that Siege Tank could have taken some more further heavy damage. Keen is actually the one who starts his Buster Attack upgrade a little bit faster. It doesn't matter too much since Maru doesn't neglect his own for too long. But yep. at this point, Maru is still ahead in the upgrades. He has the plus two armor upgrade already, whereas Keen did finish his own. It's about to be done. Maru needs to start his plus three armor though. Uh, otherwise, Keen could actually catch up on upgrades, which would be absurd considering. And you can see Maru is starting to move his command center over now. A little bit of long distance mining going on before that. That's his main command. He is not made in orbital. Yeah. And Maru is still 1-0 in this group, so if he takes out Keen, it would be kind of devastating for the MVP player. It would be an 0-2 at the bottom of the ranking, but Maru in a great position to advance to Kodes, and he wants to make it happen. He drops into his opponent's main base and goes into the mineral line right away. Yep, there's nothing here to defend, just a few Marines rallying out. Now the rest of the Marines come down, he will get the reactor, and three Marines escape. Meanwhile, the base of Keen is still not able to mine. Maru's base not only is mining, but he has a big patrol guard set up there. But Keen has double drops coming around the right side. They will be spotted. They need to be taken out, though. He needs to move those Marines from his third base over and now defend and intercept that drop. Ah, uh, he needs to be careful with his Medivac. The Medivac is a little bit too fast. Uh, he pulls it back just in time. And here come the Marines, and there's no chance. No, Keen is losing everything here. The drop stands no chance whatsoever. Both Medivacs are taking out, and Maru takes a huge supply lead. Yeah, huge supply lead. The upgrades still slightly in favor of Keen. 
Maru has not, for some reason, started his armor. Neither has Keen. Neither of them want to, for whatever reason. You know, they're spending all their gas on other things. Well, in Keen's case, he doesn't have the minerals. He has plenty of gas. Maru is just the better production at this point. He has the better economy. The only thing that really works for Keen is that he has the high ground advantage here, that he is already in a sieged up position, and it's hard for Maru. It's quite tough for him to actually break through here. This is why Maru is trying to operate with drops a little bit more in this game. And he's just looking for an angle where he can attack and maybe even drop onto the high ground into the main base. Yeah. Uh-oh, this is not a good engagement for Keen. He does not have enough here. Oh my god, he might actually lose the, the game. The Siege though, at the back are going to help him out, but I think he's lost too many of his Marines before this happens. The Siege Tank sieged up so late. The Marines are running in. He could even try to get a little bit closer, but he takes most of them out already. Keen is down to 75 supply. With 120, Maru has a massive lead, and he's actually now running into the third base and just making sure that there's no income for Keen anymore. GG. GG and game. Maru takes the 2-0, is now tied with Fantasy for first place, and Keen is 0-2 in the group. Maru really made his Banshees worth it. Then he uh, was able to establish map dominance early on, getting really nice upgrades. But one thing I want to say about Maru's play that I think gave him a slight edge over Keen is him not making a third command center and actually just lifting. Because he mined out so quickly, that base wasn't used for him anymore, and that allowed those 400 minerals it takes to make a command center allowed him to have so many more marines. The drop also that he shut down when the double drop was at the bottom, this was kind of where suddenly things tipped in Maru's favor too. He had a huge supply lead and was able to get in there. So he's now in a really good position in this group. Maru, one of those players where a lot of people didn't really know, what they should expect from him. He yeah. was dedicating quite a lot of time to Heart of the Swarm. People looked at him like, eh, can he really do it? Will he be able to get out? He's up against really big names here. But now he's 2-0 in the group. That doesn't guarantee him a spot in Code S. He could still very well be in Code B next season. But so far, uh, Code A, of course. But so far, he's looking really, really strong. And the I mean, two Tyrone Keen, players... It's, you know, Keen is now in a situation yep. where... He's one of the players that a lot of people favorite because he's been around so long. He's just got a likable personality, but at the same time, he's his chances of getting on this group are not really up to him anymore. No. Right now, it's going to be very, very tough for Keen, but for Maru and for Fantasy, everything is going well. Our next game is not going to feature a Terran player, though. No. This time, we have Hero up against Nesti. Yeah, Protoss versus Zerg, and we'll see if Nesti can play a different game. He got a little bit unlucky and then just got ulti yeah. out multitasked by Fantasy in his Zerg versus Terran. But we're shifting gears now, and the map is hidden again now. I'm going to look at it. It is Daybreak. Daybreak. Hero has a couple of really good pushes against Zerg, and it's going to be interesting to see what he can do against Nesti here. For Nesti, this is also the only game that he has to play against a non terran player. The same is true for Hero. I mean, both of them are now in a group where they don't have to face a mirror opponent, and they only have to face one non-ZVT, uh, one non terran player. So right. this is going to be interesting to see how well they prepared for this. They knew the maps in advance, and I could certainly just see both of them preparing a special strategy for this one map, and then entirely focusing on the practice against Terran players. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think Hero is going to show Stargate play here. Nesti, though, could do anything. He could yeah. do something unique. He could do a very early Roach aggression. He could go for um, Stefano style play where you try to shut down the third base of your opponent with heavy Roach attacks. He could even go for Ling Rumbies at the third. We could see something like Mutas on this map from Nesti. Depends on uh, how he's been approaching it. Yeah. You know, like you said, one specific build is probably what we're going to see. I would see. I actually think that Nesti is probably going to uh, play really uh, um, reactionary style and trying to just to adjust to whatever Hero does. And the Stargate that you mentioned is most likely what we're going to see from Hero. He has a couple of really strong Stargate openings, even with um, Immortal Push follow up on three bases, a couple of different variations too. But we are going to find out what exactly he is on his mind now. ST, even though he is down a game in this group, he looks still very focused. Hero is in the same boat. Both of these players are down a game in this up and down group, Group C. Hero dying to a really well executed timing push from Maru. ST dying from having a case of fantasy. Yeah. A very strong case of fantasy, fantasy taking him out there and putting himself into a very good spot. So this is going to be a very important game for both of them. Whoever loses here will have a very tough time making it out of the group today and they both know it.
It's a five player group. This is not one of those six player groups that we have where you can lose two games and you are still you can still be in a DC spot depending on who you lost to. But this is going to be very, very intense. Daybreak, pretty good map for Protoss versus Zerg. And let's see what Hero or NST can do here. Our first Protoss vs Zerg at the GSL up and downs. We are going to jump into Daybreak in just a few seconds. Hero is up against Nesty. We are going to find out who will at least be able to get one win and who is 0-2 after this game. The same score as Keen who just lost tomorrow. Let's jump into the game at the GSL up and downs. Colin Wolf.